Now, your News 8 forecast first. Another warm and nice evening out there, but windy. There's a surprise in Rochester lately. We're going to talk more about that wind and the streak of it lately the last couple of months. It's all out ahead of a cold front. A bunch of thunderstorms peppered along this boundary as it makes its way east. We will see that tomorrow right around lunchtime. High winds tomorrow, wind advisory. That's Monroe County right there, and that's one under that advisory through tomorrow night around midnight. Same deal out toward Orleans, Genesee as well. So it's going to be windy, noontime showers, a rumble of thunder. Should not be severe, but temperatures drop severely. So by tomorrow evening, 45, paving the way for a weekend that's a little bit cooler, especially Saturday. Getting to it next here on News 8 at 11, which starts right now. From WROC in Rochester, this is News 8 at 11 in high definition. Tonight, two tragedies continue to unfold before our eyes. Today, we are enlisting the public's help to identify the two suspects. As we get our first look at the men the FBI believes are responsible for the marathon bombings, the president brings a sense of hope to the city of Boston. We'll keep going. We will finish the race. Meanwhile, investigators are sifting through the rubble after an explosion nearly levels the town of West Texas. It is devastated. Uh, it is still a very volatile situation. But in the wake of both tragedies, local citizens step up to do extraordinary things. It was the people on scene who provided that initial care, which is so important. And good evening, everyone. A lot of new developments tonight. We're going to begin with the latest in the Boston Marathon bombings. Tonight, the manhunt is on. Take a look. The FBI has released video and photos of two suspects. The video taken near the finish line of the Boston Marathon right before the two explosions. You can see the men walking single file through the crowd, both wearing baseball caps, both carrying similar backpacks. Now the FBI needs your help finding them. Benita Nyer brings us the latest from Boston. They are known as Suspect 1, who's seen wearing a black baseball cap, and Suspect 2, wearing a white one, turned backwards on his head. The two men are seen carrying backpacks through the crowd at the Boston Marathon just minutes before the bombs went off. Suspect 2 set down a backpack at the site of the second explosion just in front of the Forum restaurant. Early on, investigators focused on just one of the suspects, but the more they saw, the more they thought he was not alone. The FBI is hoping someone who knows one or both of the men will recognize them. Though it may be difficult, the nation is counting on those with information to come forward and provide it to us. It was an emotional day here in Boston. The images of those suspects were released just hours after President Obama attended an interfaith service meant to heal and inspire a city in mourning. The president spoke of the three people who died in the attack, as well as the more than 170 who were injured. As you begin this long journey of recovery, your city is with you, your commonwealth is with you, your country is with you. He said if the bombers wanted to intimidate and terrorize, they chose the wrong city for their target. And this time next year, on the third Monday in April, the world will return to this great American city to run harder than ever and to cheer even louder for the 118th Boston Marathon. Boston, he said, will run again. Vanita Nyer, CBS it. News, Boston. We've got a link to all the suspect photos. And to find out how you can help the FBI, go to our website, rochesterhomepage.net. Click on the Terror in Boston banner. We are also following the progress of a Webster family who was injured in the blast. They were in Boston to watch their mother run in the marathon. Three siblings of the DiMartino family were wounded. Kim suffered a ruptured eardrum. Gina has nerve damage to her legs. And Pete suffered severe burns, a broken ankle, and severe injuries to his Achilles tendon. Pete's girlfriend, Rebecca, suffered two shattered ankles. All are hospitalized in Boston, and we'll bring you much more on this as details become available. And here's the latest on that explosion in Texas. The town of West still trying to determine how many people have died after that devastating fertilizer plant explosion. At least five bodies have been recovered. More than 160 are injured. And the investigation to find out why it happened is just starting. Here's Randall Pinkston. This is a bird's eye view of what was the West fertilizer plant. It was rocked by a massive explosion Wednesday. <laughs> The blast leveled the building and destroyed surrounding structures. 
Brian Anderson and his son were sitting in his pickup truck in between buildings that no longer exist. God wants me here for a reason. I just got to find out what that is now. Rescuers combed the rubble Thursday, checking for anyone still trapped in the debris. The physical loss is apparent. The human toll still unknown. Firefighters down. Again, there has been an explosion. There are firefighters down. Some of the firefighters responding to the initial blaze are still missing and feared dead. They were in very close proximity to the explosion, thus uh, uh, we have not been able to, to locate those firemen yet. One of them, Dallas Fire Rescue Captain Kenny Harris, was killed. He was off duty at the time, but lives in West and volunteered to help fight the fertilizer plant fire. It's not yet clear what started the fire, but the company has been cited in the past for safety and permit violations. It settled one of those violations just last summer. For residents in West, the immediate task is picking up the pieces. April Puckett's house is still standing with glass shards embedded in the walls. Some of my closest friends have had their whole houses destroyed and I just, we're going to try to pull together and recover from this. I mean, that's all we can do. A small community with a very large task. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, West Texas. Country music star Willie Nelson lives just five miles from West, and he says he will turn an upcoming concert into a benefit for all the victims of that explosion. Continuing coverage now in both Texas and Boston, we have seen neighbors and bystanders rush in to help the wounded. Experts say they've played a vital role in catastrophe, as vital as first responders in many cases. Tonight, Ashley Zilka met some people who are stepping up to make sure they're ready to save a life. Ashley? Maureen, when disaster strikes, the Red Cross says we all should be prepared. The organization offers training for anything and everything. And what's happened this week is more evidence of why that's important. For Red Cross volunteers like Dave Warren, responding to disaster is second nature. Uh, to be helpful, uh, to be part of the community and assist people in need. The Red Cross sends volunteers to disaster areas all the time. Hurricane Irene, Hurricane Sandy, and now this week the Boston Marathon bombing. But would you know what to do if you were suddenly called on to help? You never know when a disaster is going to strike. And if you've noticed in both of these situations, um, although first responders came to both um, very quickly, it was the people on scene who provided that initial care, which is so important. In light of recent events, the American Red Cross is bringing attention to that very subject. Whether it's a major community-wide disaster or a family member getting hurt at home, it helps teach people what to do when an emergency occurs. We provide um, an assortment of CPR and first aid courses for all ages, um, and we also provide disaster preparedness courses, which help people learn how to build a kit, uh, make a plan for their family, and be prepared in the case of disaster. In Rochester, the local Red Cross focuses on house fires, floods, and heart attacks. But the courses go beyond that. In Boston, trauma to the limbs was a major issue. Red Cross has a class for that. Being able to um, you know, identify wounds, um, even deep tissue wounds, we teach that sort of first aid. And we actually have first aid courses for professional responders that we offer as well. The courses can help you save a life. Dave Warren heads to Boston tomorrow morning to help in yet another disaster. No two are the same. I really have no idea. It's going to be totally different than helping the people in New Jersey, different circumstances, different needs. Uh, but basically, uh, we're trained to do whatever needs, be, needs done. To now, Maureen, if you don't want to go take a course, you could go right on your iPhone or Android. They have a free first aid app. They have really? tons of videos, different tips, all sorts of good stuff. Got your iPhone with you. I'm ready. <laughs> and we understand that Dave Warren is among several volunteers. Yes, to Boston. Dave will be going with two other people tomorrow, first thing in the morning. They don't know how long they'll have to be there, but they're ready to be there for at least three weeks if need be. All right. Ashley Zilka, thank you so much tonight. Our coverage continues all night long and into tomorrow. You'll find updates overnight on CBS Up to the Minute and then tomorrow morning at 5 on News 8 at Sunrise and CBS This Morning at 7. I'm going to get you up to speed on an awful crash on the state thruway last night near Buffalo. Three people were killed. It happened uh, this morning in Silver Creek. An infant and two adults died. Along with the three people who died, there were seven others in the van that they were in. Six were flown to hospitals. Now, investigators say this crash looks like it's consistent with drowsy driving. They believe the driver fell asleep at the wheel driving home from Florida. 
Police say he then hit the back of a state DOT dump truck. Uh, they're still investigating the crash. Nine members of SUNY Geneseo's crew team are safe tonight after they were rescued on Canisius Lake this morning. This is a picture of the rescue. Police say the crew team was practicing when their boat started taking on water and the boat overturned in the middle of the lake. Awfully cold water there. The team coach was riding in a separate boat and was able to bring the crew to shore where they were treated at the scene. All new at 11. Good news about New York's yogurt business. New York number one in the nation when it comes to producing yogurt. A lot of that taking place in our area. Governor Cuomo says yogurt production in 2012 surpassed former leader California. The state produced 100 million pounds more yogurt than California. Much growth can be attributed to incentives and tax breaks to local farmers and companies who are setting up shop here. New York formerly was a leader in just Greek yogurt, but this is the first time the state has led in every yogurt category. We're also the nation's fourth largest producer of milk. Coming up on Newsday, the Child Advocacy Center, once on the brink of shutting down, helps local prosecutors in a major case. We'll explain. Plus, tonight the NFL releases the upcoming schedule. Find out who the Bills play and when. Scott? I'm still shocked over that yogurt deal. I number no one. Idea. I love it. We're number, number one, one, baby. Number one. All right, we were number one today in the weather world, right? 77 degrees. Well, wave goodbye. We'll tell you why next. You're watching the team you can trust. Kevin Doran, Maureen McGuire, Rochester's most accurate forecast with Chief Meteorologist Scott Hetzko and Sports Director John Kuchko. This is News 8 at 11 in high definition.